so welcome to this session uh, today we are going to see uh, and learn about the Johnson's rule which is a rule used in scheduling uh, now this is aimed at uh, minimizing the completion time when there are two machines involved or two work centers involved in processing of jobs we'll study about the Johnson's rule in this session and also see through an example how this rule is applicable or applied in practices so first uh, uh, we need to have an understanding that there are uh, a sequence of uh, only two work centers or machines there are n number of jobs which are arriving the first uh, machine does the first processing thereafter the job is submitted to the second machine for further processing and thereafter it comes out um, and uh, the job gets finished now in which order or which sequence should these uh, jobs be ordered to minimize the processing time through these two work center or two machines that is the objective and this objective is effectively achieved uh, with the help of Johnson's rule which is a technique for minimizing the completion time for a group of jobs to be processed on two machines or two work centers so the main objective is, is to minimize the idle time for these two machines now there are certain conditions that need to be satisfied in order to apply the Johnson's rule the first one being that for each of these jobs uh, the job times that is the processing times as well as when they arrive they must be known and constant then the jobs uh, times uh, must be independent of the sequence means the processing time of these jobs should be independent of each other it should not be that the processing time of job 2 is dependent on job 1 so these are independent jobs what we mean to say now um, all of these or in fact each of these jobs should follow the same two machine sequence that each one will be first processed on machine 1 2 then thereafter on machine 2 now the other condition which needs to be satisfied is that that we cannot assign priorities to these jobs beforehand it is only the processing time which they which we are having and based on that we have to assign sequence it cannot be that some pre assigns priorities there because in that case uh, the Johnson's rule uh, won't be applicable and as I also mentioned that first machine one does the processing in each of these jobs then the machine two so once these conditions are satisfied we proceed with the Johnson application of Johnson's rule as follows now we see what is the shortest processing time for any of uh, the group of jobs if that shortest processing time is for machine one for a particular job then what we do is we place that particular job at the front of the sequence immediately after any jobs which have already been scheduled and if that shortest process time is for machine two then we place that job at the back of the sequence and immediately before any jobs already scheduled we'll see in a subsequent example to make it more clear and once we have placed a particular job in a sequence we remove the job from the original list from which we are trying to assess the ordering or sequence of the jobs now we repeat this process again and again and again till we get the final sequence or with all jobs considered now let us see an example there are five jobs one two three four five the processing time for machine one for these jobs and machine two is given and we have to determine the best sequence applying Johnson's rule for this jobs now how do we do it so we basically need to assess this particular sequence one two three four five so five locations are there there so in each of the locations one particular job number will come and we get the order in which these will be processed now 
as the Johnson's uh, rule says first we need to assess for which particular uh, job uh, the shortest processing time is there so amongst all the lists we see that job number uh, three uh, has the shortest time for job number two so what we do is we place job number three at the first position in the sequence so job three once we have done that we cancel the entry for this uh, job because it has been processed already now we are left with the rest of the jobs and we see uh, the next shortest process time so the next shortest processing time is for machine 3 uh, that means we'll but that is for machine 2 so in this sequence for machine 2 we begin from the right hand side for machine 1 entries we begin from left hand side so we place uh, so, so this machine 2 time that is 3 is the shortest for job number 2 so we place job number 2 at the rightmost side and we have processed this so we cancel out the entries for this particular job now we are left with the results. so amongst these the shortest process time left is for job one for machine four so next we take this up and place this job immediately after up the uh, already scheduled job for machine one on left hand side so job one gets placed here and we cancel out the entry for this job now we are left with job 4 and 5 we assess the minimum uh, processes time so 6 uh, for job 5 we have but that is on machine 2 so again uh, now machine 2 uh, we begin from the right hand side so just uh, immediately before the last uh, assigned jo job we place the job five and then we cancel out the job from the list as uh, it had already been processed now we are left with job four so we are left with one position only so job four comes over here so job three one four five two that is the sequence in which these jobs should be processed to minimize the uh, idle time of uh, these machines this I have also illustrated uh, in a step-by-step -step manner what we just did in the earlier uh, slide so once we do that we get 31452 that is the same sequence 31452 which you get over here so that was Johnson's rule thank you being a patient learner and have a nice day